I'm Paul Blue, speaking for the Time and Life stations in Denver, KLZ Radio and KLZ Television. For the next 10 minutes or so, we'd like to present our broadcasting philosophy. It is our fundamental belief that television is, in addition to being a magnificent entertainment machine, a significant illustrator of our times. This small room in a Denver hospital is a reason for television. Cutting into a human body to repair a damaged heart is important. It is not enough to write about it or speak about it. Being there to see and to hear, to feel an incredible tension, is a meaningful experience. It is a miracle that belongs to the times. Watch a fragile life being saved. Await each flutter of the lungs, every throb of a weakened heart. There is something here that adds an unforgettable dimension to life experience. This is not a lofty or a smug illustration. This is not razzle-dazzle. This is not showmanship. It is a method of communication that has evolved for more than 37 years of broadcast experience in Denver. It all started here in Denver in 1923. A dentist named W.D. Reynolds was a part of that era. He didn't care much for dentistry. He was more interested in fiddling around with radio and tooting on his E-flat alto saxophone. He started KLZ in 1922 and programmed it with his own saxophone music. Had his transmitter right in the basement of his old house in South Denver. Doc Reynolds had given Denver its first radio station. During the dizzy 20s and the depression 30s, Doc was there to broadcast everything from dance marathons to track meets, from floods to NRA parades. Denver, an overgrown cow town, as Doc used to call it, Population, 256,000 in 1923. After the war, the young people discovered Denver. They came west by the hundreds of thousands. They needed houses. They wanted high buildings, two cars in every garage, superhighways, churches. They jammed and crammed into Denver. They built suburbs and shopping centers. They formed unions and trade associations. This isolated western city found itself a neighbor to the world and it built boldly. The wind-punctured plains grew fat and rich with agriculture. Denver began to worry about industry corrupting the sky with smoke and the water with pollution. Voters threw out an ancient political machine, got professional football and baseball, and continued to build, build, build. The city grew to 923,000 in 1960. KLZ grew too. 5,000 watts of radio power. And in 1953, we added the two magic letters, TV. Go, honey, keep going, baby. Keep going, baby. We have an especial interest in the big bird, the Titan. The Martin Company is building it here in Denver. In three documentary programs, we followed it from production line to firing at Cape Canaveral, Florida. But while the significant is beguiling, we can't neglect the routine, the day-by-day -day reporting of spot news on both radio and television. Here's the story. Apparently, two men were practicing takeoff and touch down landings at Lowry Field on their east-west runway. Somehow they did touch down, going westward, but the plane crashed in the backyard of this home. We're not far from Lowry, and possibly you KLZ listeners can hear the sound of the planes in the background as they idle and some of them taking off, too. Nobody can give an exact cause of the accident. We suspect there will be an investigation by Lowry, as is normal in the case of military crashes. Sometimes this routine coverage will lead us beyond the story itself. This is the first court trial ever televised in the state of Colorado. The dark-haired boy with the crew cut is John Gilbert Graham. You remember him. Planted a time bomb in the suitcase carried by his mother on a United airliner. A few minutes later, his mother and 43 other persons were dead, blown to bits in the northern Colorado sky. The opinion is that the airplane uh, was uh, destroyed in the air as a result of an explosion. KLZ had requested permission to broadcast and televise the trial. 
Permission was denied. We hit the air with a series of sharp editorials, got the Colorado Supreme Court to consider our case, and won a revision of Canon 35 of the Judicial Code of Ethics. And Colorado was one of the first states to permit television, radio, and photography in the courtrooms. Day by day, we like to keep close to our audience to make our programs two-way streets. There's a nightly radio show called Party Line. Good evening. Hello there. This is the party line. Uh, good evening, sir. Where is our spunk? Why don't we have a man in the White House that's got a good Teddy Roosevelt fist? Or a Franklin Roosevelt? Uh, this, uh, these ridiculous arguments about politics and that, they, they just don't make any sense. And furthermore, on some of these remarks on the party line, what this country needs is a good five-cent mouthwash. Good night, sir. And a sprightly morning show with Art Gow. Hello there. Art? Yes. I'd like to you play a Yellow Rose of Texas for Floyd Pippen, Jr., a uh, station over in Germany. Oh. His birthday was the 12th of October. I see, okay. And I want to also play it for Sharon and, uh, and his dad, Floyd Pippen, and his mother, Ruby Pippen, okay. and Bobby and Ricky, and his, his grandpa, Tom Pippen. Fine, we'll do them all. Okay. Thank you. Uh -huh. Bye. <laughs> We like to think our programs are responsive to the needs of our Colorado audience, which is an outdoor-loving audience, as you can see. Broadcasts of Denver University Hockey, the team that beat the world champion American Olympic team. We believe in the open-end concept of TV interviewing. We have a no-nonsense local columnist named Max Goldberg to fire the questions. How many electoral votes do you think Senator Kennedy will get? I don't think I dare speculate about that. I have not been had a conspicuously successful record as a prophet on elections. You we are genuinely proud of our awards. We have them for showmanship, for audio and visual coverage of news, for medical and science reporting, for our contribution to the religious life of our city. We have the George Foster Peabody, two DuPont Awards, the Paul White Memorial Award, more awards in every category than any other broadcast facility in the nation. <laughs>